You want the best performance, best fuel economy out of your motor? Well, it all starts with selecting the right prop. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the basics of prop selection, as well as dive into the most important aspect of selecting your prop, which is pitch. I recently changed out my prop here with the guys from Preferred Marine. I'm seeing some amazing numbers. Can't wait to show them to you. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up guys, my name's Captain Mike and welcome to Real Reports. This is my dream boat build series where we built this boat from scratch and here we are today sitting on her, enjoying her, fishing her, just been a great boat so far. But one thing when buying a boat that's often overlooked is the prop and it is so important to get right. Luckily, a lot of manufacturers will get it right for you, but some just won't. It is overlooked, so it's up to you. And your style of boating really does determine which prop to select. Recently, we had the boat in the shop. We hung this brand new 300 V8 Mercury on the back here. And the props that were available to us at the time were very limited. So we had to get this prop right here, which is a Mercury Eco Prop. It's 16 by 20 P. It says LH on there for left hand. But the 16 is the diameter of the prop. And then the most important thing is the 20 P, the 20 pitch, right? So when I got this prop, the guys at Preferred Marine kind of knew that I would be back to want to swap it out, even though um, I thought the numbers were pretty good. I was pretty happy, especially with the torque, the whole shot, and the overall top speed. However, talking to Cody, talking to Kirk over there at Preferred Marine and several other people, they knew that I had to go down in pitch go to 19, which is exactly what we have on there now to get a little bit better performance. And in these times, in these economical periods when fuel prices are rising, every little bit you can save is gonna be worth it. So this prop cost me about $800. So you can see that I can pay for, that this prop will pay for itself rather quickly if I'm saving fuel with the, with the new prop there. I am gonna keep this one as a backup. You just never know when you're gonna need it, but hopefully, hopefully we do not need it. But let's talk a little bit about the pitch today because that's kind of the most important aspect to prop selection, especially for um, the style of boating that we're doing here. The style of boating we do here in South Florida is we do a lot of live bait fishing. We do some diving um, where we're bringing tanks, we're bringing a lot of gear, but mostly on this boat, we're doing a lot of live bait fishing. So we have a live well here. We have one in the center of the boat, one in the front of the boat. We're carrying a thousand pounds of water a lot of the time, just a lot of weight, and it will affect your whole shot, which is the speed that you can get up and get out of the water and then get on a plane. So going down in pitch, I was looking to improve my whole shot when I'm loaded. So let's talk about exactly what pitch is. So pitch is the distance the propeller will travel through a solid in one rotation. That's without any slip. So this here is a 20 pitch. In one rotation, this is gonna travel exactly 20 inches. Now that we have a 19 pitch on the motor, we're gonna get a full rotation of 19 inches. Again, that's without any slip there. So that's important to know because when you go up in pitch, you know, you're going to lose some hole shot. When you go down in pitch, you're going to gain some hole shot. And there's pros and cons to going up or down, depending on the boat that you're using, depending on the style of boating that you do. But in my particular situation, going down in pitch made sense because this is an important factor. We weren't getting the manufacturer recommended wide open throttle RPM range, WOT, out of this motor. In a previous video, I showed you the numbers. You can go back to that video here um, where I was only able to get about 5,400 RPM out of the motor. Now, I don't really care that I got 50 miles an hour out of the motor, but that RPM range, if you're not getting the manufacturer stated numbers, which on this motor, the top range is 6,000. So anywhere between 5,500 and 6,000 would be pretty good range. Um, but a lot of people try to get the 6,000 range when they're propping their motors, which means that the motor's not gonna work as hard when you're at those lower RPMs. So what does that equate to? That equates to fuel savings. 
Think of prop pitch as the gears on your truck or bicycle. The lower the gear, the stronger the pulling power you have, but the lower top speed you're gonna have. For every pitch that you go down, that is from 20 to 19 to 18, you're gonna gain about 200 RPM. So we're gonna be looking to get, uh, if we had 5,400 before, maybe 5,600, 5,700. We'll play with the trim today, see how high we can get. So going down in pitch, is gonna provide us with more power. That's gonna pull more weight. When we're loaded down, we're gonna have more power out of that prop. So that's pretty important to us. And when we do prop testing, we wanna have a load that is similar to the load that we're gonna have when we go out fishing or any style of boating that we're accustomed to doing. So I got 110 gallons of fuel on here. Once we start doing a few tests and getting the fuel for this prop, we're gonna load up the bait wells, add some more weight to it, um, and just see how she performs under load. So that's pretty key. So today we're gonna to be doing a few tests with our new prop. We're gonna be looking at hole shot. We're gonna be doing some cruising, and then I'm gonna do wide open throttle if I get enough space out here and see if we can get a little bit higher RPM. Overall, I am interested in efficiency. This is gonna be a charter boat. We want the best fuel numbers, which means the best ROI when we're doing charters, the best bottom line we can possibly get. On the water lately, we're paying about $5 a gallon. So if we can get those numbers down, um, as far as fuel burn, that will help us out tremendously. So let's go ahead and do some tests here. I'm gonna get up my cameraman in the sky there so you can see I'm also gonna plug you into my Simrad unit where you can see the numbers. We're gonna do hole tests. We're gonna do some mid-range cruising around beautiful Biscayne Bay out here. It is a gorgeous day. Um, we're over here sitting by Stiltsville. I'll show you guys all around this area. We'll get up on a plane here. And I'm just excited to show you these numbers because I cruised all the way down here and I could already tell without looking at the numbers that we got a totally different animal on our hand. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, first test, we're gonna do a whole shot here. We're gonna trim the tabs down a little bit. See what she's got. All right, one more hole shot test here. Here we go. Now we're gonna be doing some cruise tests. Remember, safety is always the number one priority when doing these. We're gonna be wearing our lanyard today. It is a requirement when you're on a plane now, when you're doing anything but idling, you gotta wear your lanyard. If you're ever to fall out of the boat, it disconnects the motor, causes a uh, you know, rogue, rogue uh, boat. So you wanna make sure that you don't uh, do that. So um, we're gonna be wearing our lanyard. Let's go ahead and get started here. See if the drone can keep up.
pretty nice, about 38 miles an hour, 3.1, 3.2, feels pretty good. an hour at 3.1 that's pretty good I can get a little bit more out of this but the drone can't keep up all right we're gonna do a test without the drone now prices of gas is all you want. It ain't gonna matter. We're stealing over here. Let's see if we have any slip here. No slip. Zero slip. A little bit right there. A little bit. Just a little bit. All right. You guys want that wide open again? Stand up, stand up. Wide open, baby. Show me 5,500 RPM again. Woo! Goddamn! Yeah! Choppy boy! At 50, easy! 51, get it! So as we said, you go down in pitch, you're gonna increase your hole shot, you're gonna increase your RPM, but you might lose a little speed. In this case, I, um, I went down in pitch, we went from a 20 to 19, we gained a little bit of RPM there. My cruise looks really good, 40 miles an hour, three miles per gallon. Um, what I really like about these eco props are not only efficient, but they also have a really great slow troll speed for me. We do a lot of slow trolling, a lot of bump trolling and stuff like that. And I don't like going in and out of gear so much. So it's kind of nice to go really, really slow. And then you can actually come into your Mercury here, go to vessel control, put it in gear, hit, hit troll control, troll control, and then hit enable. And now you got a really, really slow, slow, look at that, 540, 550 RPM, two miles per hour. I've seen even lighter than that, but it basically avoids the need for a trolling motor if I can go super slow because going in and out of gear does spook fish and stuff like that. So, man, it feels good to stretch the legs on the girl. Anytime I can run this boat for extended periods of times, it's a lot of fun. This boat has a lot of mid-range torque, which kind of changes the feel from what I'm traditionally used to, just making it a more thrilling experience. But I covered about uh, 15, 20 miles there. Went from basically Stiltsville here to Hollover, and I think we made a good investment. So let me explain. 
We went down from 20 to 19 in pitch. When you go down in pitch, you're gonna expect to have a better hole shot, should get some better efficiency, but you might lose top speed. That's kind of exactly what happened to me. You know, I hope it's not placebo, but it definitely feels like the boat is jumping up on a plane way quicker, even when we put some water in the boat. Um, the mid-range numbers are definitely better. I can vouch for that. I was doing about 30 miles an hour, seeing 3.5 right now, and at 40, I was seeing three miles a gallon. So those are pretty good numbers. I, similar to what I was getting before. Now my wide open speed, which is something I'll never see because I'm more of a kind of get everybody out there safe and comfortable kind of guy, just cruise out there, we get there when we get there. Um, but in the rare instances that I need to rescue somebody or I see somebody's dog fall out of the boat or their child, I need to get there quick. And we did gain a little bit of speed. We gained about a mile and a half, maybe two. I saw 52 miles per hour. We saw, we saw 50.4, I believe, last time with our last prop. So not a whole of a heck of a lot of difference there, but we did see that 200 RPM increase in the wide open, which we were expecting. Um, overall, was it worth it? It was about an $850 investment. Um, I could think of a lot of things to get for $850, including two Shimano Saragossas. Thank you to my good friend, Luis. Luis hooked me up over Christmas there with some Shimano Saragossas. So we're gonna be putting those to the test. Um, but seriously though, $800, you know, it's not a huge difference. I think the more we ride the boat, the more we get a heavy load in the boat, that's when we're gonna feel a little bit better about our investment over here. The mid-range numbers efficiency is what's really most important to me. When I'm cruising back, you know, into a wind, into a stiff current, or just, you know, big heavy load, and you're seeing three miles per gallon, 3.5, you are stealing. Somebody call the cops and put me away because that is stealing. And with gas prices going to $5 and up, you know, um, we don't know where they're gonna end up, but um, anything you can do to gain efficiency, I think is, worth discussing and worth uh you know talking about but um i could go either way i mean eight hundred dollars is still a lot of money and uh i was content with my old prop we will see the future will tell comment below do you think it's worth it based on those numbers based on the performance you've probably been watching me out here a little bit i know a lot of you guys thought that my whole shot could have been better so we definitely improved that today i'm wide open a lot of people are going to tell me they want to see six thousand rpm out of the wide open so um you know do we go down to that 18.5 eco xp prop see if we can squeeze out a little bit more not my style but i know um being in the mercury kind of brotherhood over here now it's something i'm still getting used to because i'm not a go fast guy i don't really care about top speed um, I prefer safety, I prefer reliability, and I um, like to take care of everybody that's in the boat going super fast. Just isn't for me. However, as a Mercury owner, it's kind of growing on me because here I am doing 40 miles an hour when I'm usually doing 30, you know, so it is fun. It's definitely fun, but, um, you know, something to get used to. But uh, we just finished our 300 hour service on this. We haven't had one single problem with her yet. I've been very good to her so far. So um, I look forward to getting 300 more hours and even more than that, pro problem free. So I hope that helps you when you go to select your prop, when you go to select the pitch of your prop, whether you're buying a new boat, new motor, and uh, you want to prop it correctly according to the style of boating that you do, whether you're, you know, um, doing scuba diving, you're carrying a lot of tanks with you or just heavy loads from bait wells, or maybe you're on a lake and you got a ski boat that needs to uh, pull up heavy wakeboarders, you're going to need a lower pitch for all that. And that's why um, I kind of went down and pitch here today is because we're carrying some load and we wanted to see a little bit more performance.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be well, be healthy, be safe out there, and most importantly, take care of your neighbor. We are all in this together. My name's Captain Mike. This is Real Reports, Tight Lines, and Great Fishing. baby that is quick it feels like a skiff this boat feels like a damn low skiff it just pops up like boop, boop, boop. it's quick and she's efficient too very efficient I'm getting 3.4 miles per gallon at 26 miles an hour I'm not even doing anything, you know? Like, I'll take that all day. All day. riding different it's kind of like when you have a few a fuel tank that's full this is a, a great speed here 35 miles an hour three miles per gallon take it all day long all day tight lines everybody Hey, you want to sell that top? I'll, I'll give you five grand right now. <laughs> Look at all that shade, boy. Damn. Oh, thanks, man. Let me get some. Uh, let me get a pick of that bad boy. That thing's sick. It's a little single diesel. Oh, okay. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, look at that top, man. You had it thought out. What a classic boat right there, man. Baits. Come on, man.